Welcome, witches. Today we're gonna be taking a look at a trailer to a movie that's been several years in the making. This movie was first gonna come out just directly after Scream 4, but it ended up getting delayed for many reasons. The first of them being that Harvey Weinstein was heavily, heavily attached to it originally, and uh, the project fell apart for obvious reasons afterwards. The writers behind Scream 5 still really wanted to find a studio that would uh, just release the movie at all, I guess. In 2019, Scream 5 was picked up by Spyglass Media, but it ended up getting delayed yet again because, oops, a 2020 thing. Another complication that sort of kind of arose around this movie is that this is the first movie that does not include Wes Craven as director may he rest in peace. But don't worry, this isn't an entire Lakewood slasher situation. There are going to be people returning to the movies. We've got our typical crew of Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette. Gotta wonder a little bit if it's a little awkward for them to film together after the divorce, but you know, whatever, that's not my part. I would imagine yes, because like the first thing before I heard like they were divorced, I didn't know that, but I was like, they're still filming together? Yeah. They Are met they on the to... Scream films, too. Like, that's the that's other the thing. That's the awkward like, part. Like, this is not just a franchise that has been big in them. This is a franchise that's kind of been big for their relationship. Like, they met in these movies. They built a relationship on these movies. And now their relationship is no more, so... Gotta wonder if that's uncomfortable. We also have Kevin Williamson, the creator of Scream, coming back right in the script. I also know that Matthew Lillard, who's uh, very well known on the internet. Are you challenging me? Has expressed interest in returning for Scream 5, but again, that's all, spe that's all rumor at this point. There's been no confirmation that he's returning. All in all, it looks like a pretty promising start so far. And I do hope that they do well with this one. Scream is a franchise that's pretty close to my heart. It's one that I grew up with, but that being said, it's also one that's received like a million sequels. So it's not necessarily one that I care if they bastardize in a way. I just, you know, would prefer to get a good Scream sequel than a bad Scream sequel. So let's watch this and hope for the best. Okay, so one comment right off the bat. It's kind of cute, this little shout out to the landline phone that appeared in the 90s movies because of course it was a 90s movie and that's what they used back then. It's, <laughs> it's not even really a landline though, is it? I guess like not. It's, it's kind of like the digital phone that's still connected to the landline. Yeah, yeah. Like More it's... like what ha kind of started to appear at the end of landline phones, but more towards yeah. people actually having cell phones. Honestly, because I think, like, my family, before they cut off their whole uh, thing, uh, they had one of those. Yeah, for, like, a very brief period of time. Very brief. Yeah. Like, it you know, still feels nostalgic because you get that, like, Rin tone that you don't necessarily get with a cell phone, I guess. Yeah, really. Like, you got your old school parents that are like, Yeah. I used to have... A landline. I'm gonna still have a sort of landline. Yeah. It never dies. <laughs> but who knows that number? I mean, maybe that's part of what makes it creepy. Who knows that number? Who's calling a landline in oh, 2022? Oh, that's kind of fucking weird, actually. Actually, yeah. She called it a landline. I'm rewinding a little bit. Can what we? was this conversation? Yeah, can we just back up the combo? Mom's out of town again. You should come over here. Free dinner. Maybe binge watch options. Have, Have to, to do, do better. better. Unlocked liquor cabinet. What the fuck? You okay? You should answer it. She didn't mm -hmm. mention that her phone was ringing. The friend that she's texting just knows that her phone is ringing. This is kind of creepy. Why did the confirmation that that wasn't Amber make her want to answer the landline? I think that would make me want to call the cops because now I'm concerned. No, because I would think that it was Amber. You think, think it was maybe a prank? Probably, honestly. I think that's my first reaction is like, You've just been pranked by the prank patrol. Maybe my friends okay. are dicks. Maybe I'm just like overly concerned. Like my thought, my first thought would be that Amber got kidnapped and something happened. But maybe that's just a fear response, and well, welcome it's to just the a prank. Fuck your disturbing iceberg. <laughs> this 
this I've watched way we, too many disturbing movies. This is why we're on different levels. <laughs> I see this and I'm like, did somebody who's playing a prank? And you're like, murder! <laughs> this isn't funny, Amber. Would you like to play a game? I want to go back and listen to that ghost face voice again. Fine. Tara. Okay, so what I'm gonna say is it's creepier than the original, and I think more well done than the original. More of a game, really. The original was done a little bit more uh, comedic and a little bit more playful. I don't Whereas know, I found this... the original creepier, but maybe it's just my bias because I'm so attached to the original. But I would agree that this is more gravelly, a little deeper. Yep. I think that's what bothers me, is that it feels so removed from normal voice. And maybe that's the thing that I don't like so much about it, is that I liked that the original Ghostface voice had more emotion to it. It felt like you were talking to a person. Can you handle that? Bloody. Whereas this feels more like you're talking to a horror movie villain. Like it honestly feels like, maybe I've seen, I just got too obsessed with the Zodiac and watched the Zodiac movie. This is the Zodiac speaking. And now I feel like every gravelly voice that's too gravelly <laughs> is a Zodiac. He's still there. <laughs> I will say that I love how much more dramatic that this got right away. Very quick. Yes. No build up. Well, little build up anyway from the trailer. But honestly, like anyone that's ever been like sliced before is really going to feel that. It's like, very quick, gonna, very it, shocking, it's, it's, it's I guess. Quick. It's shocking when it happens. You're like, I can see it that. happened. Yeah. How to deal. Yeah. Oh, no, I could see that for sure. That's crazy. That was just, like, more intense than... I'm gonna give this movie more of a chance, and I know I'm only, like, 30 seconds into this trailer, but I feel like it deserves, um... They're up in the ante. There's definitely a lot of, uh... A, a lot of stuff going on here. I really do feel that, yeah. Doors unlocked. They're in including technology in a lot of new and interesting ways. With having, like, the uh, automatic door locking system right there. I like that they're gonna be playing on the ways the technology affects horror nowadays. It kind of reminds me of, like, why I like the new Chucky. Yeah, And I'm not yeah. talking about the sci-fi series. Yeah. The, the 2019? 2019. I believe it was 2019, yeah. Yeah, the way that they were able to uh, incorporate a lot of new ideas and... A, a lot of technology that's just starting to become available and bring that to a scary horror space and defamiliarize it in the proper way because it is unfamiliar to us at this point. It's still a little bit unknown, so there's a lot of places that you can really play with that. Hello? It's happening. Do you have a gun? I'm Sydney Prescott, of course I have a gun. Survivor Sydney. I don't know too much. Like, I know David Arquette. Like, I keep getting confused. What are you confused by? It's a scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dewey is such an important character to me, okay? Like, I can't <laughs> deny that. I love Dewey in the first movie. He's a great character in the first movie. I, he just has a very quick downfall in the sequels. He gets very whiny very fast. Wait, he's part of Scream? Yeah. Oh, what's the guy's name in Scary Movie? Doofy. Special Officer Doofy. Ah, uh, I love <laughs> Doofy. You prefer Doofy over Dewey? Yeah, Doofy. <laughs> I liked Dewey in the first movie because he very much represented to me, like, a young adult that's just coming into the workforce. Like, he's a cop, and he's got a lot of responsibility, a lot of importance on him, especially now that there's the serial killer in town. But he's still very young and very immature and doesn't really know what to do with himself. So he's trying to be a hero, but he's still just a kid. And I like that, that they play on that very heavily in the first movie. But now he's just too adult. Yeah, yeah, he grew up very fast and very much got to be the character that was trying to hold Gale back a little bit too much. Like, he spent the whole sequel whining about Gale wanting to do anything, and meanwhile Gale was going off being her amazing self, and she just had this dead weight that complained about her all the time. 
I don't know, he wasn't a great character in any of the sequels. Something about this one just feels different. Yeah, because it's like the fifth one and we've been doing this how many times? Is someone gonna die yet? I know they were planning to kill major characters off in the fourth one, but... Can they do it now? At least we have Nev Campbell back. That, that's all I can ask for. And Courtney Cox, she's... She's pretty cool. I still love her. I won't, I won't, like, no. Am I white and do I like Friends too much? I've never seen Friends. Don't watch Friends. <laughs> Will it ruin my Courtney Cox love-ish? No, I like, I like her a lot, but I think that's because I know her in Friends. Uh, it'll okay. ruin your love of Courtney Cox watching her in Friends. I can see that. I'm just not a big sitcom person. Ah, uh, no, I hate, no, you like, you like, uh, How uh, true, I, I like, mother. I do like How I Met Your Mother. Seinfeld is a little outdated. Does The Good Place count as a sitcom? Because I, I do like that. I think so. And The Good Place. I love that. That's nice. Anyway, we're getting yeah. a little off track. I know who you are. I've been through this. A lot. How many times? Five times now. This is a, this is the fifth time she's been through this exact same situation. But when are we gonna not have her in it? It's just an odd coincidence, you know? It's just so weird that she surrounds herself with people that are insane. Like, at least with Halloween, we had quite a difference, man. Like... And at least with Halloween, it's Michael Myers. It's one guy. It's not like Jamie Lee Curtis keeps randomly meeting people that want to kill her and keep putting on the same costume to do it. But like he wants to keep killing her family, not even just her. He's yeah, her. but it's still just the one guy with the one motivation. Meanwhile, with Scream, we've gotten Billy and Stu wanted to kill her. We got Mickey and Mrs. Loomis in the second one. The third one gave us Sydney's estranged brother. The fourth one was actual human garbage fire Emma Roberts and her fictional boyfriend in the movie. It feels like Scream <laughs> is just like touching on uh, Friday the 13th and then still touching on Halloween but kind of diverting from what is Well the originally movie? Scream was a parody of slasher movies. Like it oh. is a slasher movie but it's also a parody at the same time. It just with the sequels that it became a straight out slasher franchise. You ready for this? Never. I don't know. Courtney Cox still looks pretty fucking nice. She does. She's gorgeous. And then I was gonna say, um, I don't know if I like having Gail be the one saying that she's never ready for this. Like, she's the one that's always almost trying to capitalize on it. She's the one that's published books after all of this has happened multiple times trying to get famous or whatever you want to consider Gail's motivations to be off of the fact that she's a survivor of these cases. Out of anyone, she's the most ready. I don't know. I don't know if that's correct to say because it's still not fun to survive a murder situation. It's just seems like an odd line to give to Gail. That's all I'm saying. Attacks were all on people related to the original killers. Um, so the original killers being Billy and Stu. So I guess there'd be a possibility for Matthew Lillard to enter in there if all the attacks are on people centered around the original killers. We're definitely going back to the first one in some regard. Are they families of killers or families of the deceased? Who all is left from Billy and Stu's, like, group at this point. Like, Billy's mom was the killer in the second movie, and she was killed in the second movie. Billy's dad, we assume, would be left in Lakewood doing his own thing. We don't really know. I guess he could potentially be a victim. We don't really know that much about Stu's family, I guess. Uh, but as far as I know, they didn't really have any friends that survived. So, mm. I don't really, I don't know. I don't really know who that could be referring to. No one major at the very least. No man, I'm kind of left at a loss at the end of this trailer and I feel like, well done for a trailer. It does feel like it's probably going back to that drama around Billy's family. Billy's family is probably gonna be a very main focus here because of that whole drama of Billy blaming Sydney's mom for the, the disillusion of his family his mom leaving his dad. I wonder 
what more they could milk from that storyline because Billy's dead, his mom's dead. I just don't know what more there is to go back to with that, you know? Even Sydney's mom is dead, so I guess we could go back to her in ghost form like we did in the third one, but that's also a storyline that's been milked to death through these movies. I'm just not sure if there's enough for them to add anything new here. That's my only concern, but I guess that we'll see where it goes. Here, I'll just play the last little bit of action-packed action for a little bit. Whatever his link is to our past, it's pulled us all back here. The blonde cop lady from the fourth one is coming back. Do you remember her? She's the one that made like lemon squares for uh, Dewey's character and was kind of trying to get in the middle of the marriage of him and uh, Gail, which in the fourth one, I believe it ended with them still married. So I kind of wonder if maybe she's gonna be a little bit more of a in-between for them, especially now that they're... Well, they were divorced when they were working on the last one too, but they're really divorced at this point, so... Maybe that's kind of how they're dealing with the awkwardness here, is by having that blonde cop lady come back and be more of a thorn in their relationship here. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna be brutal. That leg snapping scene in particular, gross. What's that from? Like, uh, was it Scary Movie 1? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to run, right? <laughs> I'm ready! I'm ready! Now I'm gonna fall and break my leg, leaving me helpless. Oh, I'm oh gonna play god. this desperate dumb girl. Oh and my god, yes. You can snap my leg, and it's so gross in this game movie version. I was a kid. <laughs> Why wasn't I allowed to watch any of it? I know. I watched Scary Movie when I was way too young, no. too. No. I watched Child's Play when I was way too young. I watched Bride of Chucky when I was way too young. <laughs> that doll sex scene. I mean, I watched uh, Team America. I mean, I you. guess, yeah. You still don't know the Cleveland steamer scene. <laughs> Hello, Sydney. It's an honor. Okay, let me know what you thought in the comments, if you're excited for this movie at all. And while you're down there, why not turn that red button gray? Just, you know, why not? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. If you were to go down to the description box, you would find the Amazon link to my book, Poor Pretty Creature, available wherever you can find ebooks. And while I'm still here, although it is completely unnecessary to donate, I do understand that a lot of people are struggling financially right now. I did just want to mention that I have a Patreon, which will be linked below, as well as give thanks to the people who already support me there. Andre K, Scott Falks, Thrill House, and and Wilson L. Ricks III. Donations can be as little as $1 a month, but as I said, absolutely no pressure whatsoever. Your support means the world to me, but so does the support of every single person who gives a like or a comment or even just a view. I can't wait to see you all next time.